Welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery. And over on the computer is Dawn. Hello. So before we get started on today's project, which is really cool, by the way, I wanted to show you some of the lace I've been working on. I think this one is probably my favorite. I'm going to do it in bright colors. Isabel, Karina, hello. Misha, hello. Hello to everyone. Awesome. <laughs> Karina says, hello, Don. <laughs> love the lace, says Leah. So I don't know how well you can see this one, but it's uh, I love it. I'm really happy with it. But this, I made one mistake that I have to fix. One of my circles was like a millimeter off. But, you know, so that's going to be upcoming. I'm going to fix one. But are you guys ready for this? You guys asked. What you I, got? What you got? I think last week, last Saturday. Last Saturday, yes. Boom. There we go. I'm just finishing stitching it out. How does that look, Don? That looks good. See the bright colors? So it's all lace, no fabric. All lace for sure. And this is how it's going to look. I wanted the colors to show up really well. So I've got the other side and then the roof that has decorations. No sewing, for sure, no sewing on it. It's got the TC hooks, I call them. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really cute. So this is the start of our Christmas village. You guys asked, here we go. I was thinking too, some of these green could be metallic green. And, or some of the red could be metallic red. So whatever suits you. So is that cool? I'm having a ton of fun with this. So it's already designed. I'm going to stitch it out and take some awesome pictures and then put it up for you guys to play around with. Isn't that awesome? I think this is um, Dawn's favorite. Is it, it your is. favorite? Yeah. It, is. it was my favorite when I, when I did the other test stitch of it. Yeah, I did a uh, first first draft just to make sure everything would fit together and the whole bit. And uh, then I started decorating. So that's been my project. That's what I've been in into all week besides a little bit of other lace. So I'm excited about that. So that will be upcoming. So let me move my cool thing there. And there's no room for it. And I wanted to show you guys, I got this for, from, sorry, um, Dime. And I thought it was really cool. I'm like, what the heck? What is it? What is it? And look what you get. So okay. this compass is worth its weight in gold. And I think maybe we'll give it away. Oh. What? You want it? <laughs> I was going to ask for no, no, give it away. no, we can <laughs> give it away. So when the video's done, comment of what you'd use the embroiderer's compass for, and uh, we'll pick a winner from there. It's brilliant. And I actually do use it, believe it or not. So if you're doing, you know, nylon, lightweight nylon, there, it tells you everything you need to know. It tells you how to do it. And it's two-sided, so there's like just about everything. I see that there's freestanding lace, so I'm just moving this part. So um, make sure that you comment after the video and let me know, because this is awesome, and I'll send it to you. But also in this is a sample of each of their stabilizers. And I thought this was fantastic. Betty Turner says, I love my embroiderer's compass. I thought, I thought this was pretty cool. All of Dime's um, stabilizers. So you can feel them and see what they are. And they're nice and labeled too. So isn't that a cool way of doing it That's a nice pack. little water soluble this kind this is not what we use for lace but still sew and heat ooh fuse and tear so if you've heard the names and you want to check it out sew and wash that one's really cool for quilting 
uh, Fuse So Soft is a lovely. My favorite has to be the Fuse and Stick. I think that is amazing. So yeah, I use it a lot. I actually keep it out. It's one of the few things that I keep out on my desk. So this is the stuff that I've used that you fuse it on the back of the fabric. And then when you're ready to do the uh, applique, you, it's sticky. You just take the paper off and it's sticky and it makes for perfect appliques. So I do love it. So isn't that awesome? So a nice little kit here. And I think uh, they have this, an explanation. So, and it talks about each one, cutaway, tearaway. They so a lot of different ones. they do actually more than I thought. A clear film stabilizer used as a backing or topping. Ideal for backing sheer materials without stabilizer show through. So I think that's awesome. Anyways, a nice kit and a Mariner's compass for you guys for commenting on the video after the video, the live video is ended. So I think that's all I have for show and tell. How about we get on to today's work? And we are doing crazy quilt hexagons. And I'm going to show you guys what I did. I did one because I wanted to play with the fabric. Isn't that something? Isn't that beautiful? I love the butterflies. Isn't that... Uh, I like your color your fabric choices too. Uh, well, it's worked out really well. I've pulled the layer cake. Now let me show you what I'm going to do because it's really cool how this works out i'm so happy that the colors show up so well isn't that pretty though i mean obviously i need to iron it i had a little trouble with although i can't find it oh yeah right here <laughs> right here i'm a little bit off but that's okay it's a different technique if you notice there's no applique it's all folded fabric so the focus of today is getting this technique down and uh, I'm doing this is what is it eight nine by some oh I'm gonna have to look now nine by eight almost so I'm doing the, of course they're all sizes the uh, available this is the size a so I chose this because basically each of these um, triangles can be uh, I don't know what's the word can be fitted with uh, a charm square so I took my layer cake which we're gonna go through and I cut each into four and you're only using three of them so you're gonna have two squares left over so I put those in another pile and uh, I'm going to use, so for the one we're doing today, my middle piece is going to be that because I have one square left over. So it's all going to flow and I think it's all going to look good. So hopefully I explained that properly. Maybe you'll see more when I do the stitching. But again, the focus is not, you know, doing the butterfly stitching or anything like that. This took uh, quite a long time. The colors are beautiful. The design is beautiful. It's going to be more the technique. So here's what I've done now. I also, this is from Missouri Star, Full Bloom Favorites. And that's what this is called. And I checked actually on the website and it's still there. So what I'm doing is, look at the flowers are pink kind of salmon and yellow and that's what I picked for my next one and then the more solid color um, I picked the yellow so I've got that one um, or I could have picked this and I'm just going to carry on with it so as always with layer cakes there are two or three sometimes there's three greens um, it'll it'll get you a square so the gray purple and gray see there's purple in the middle so I would pick uh, let's see the turquoise and the turquoise for the next one and then carry over the one block for that 
So I think with a layer cake, you could get through a lot and they'd all match and flow and you could uh, order them up. So I took, I took one and it's just, I didn't do anything fancy, folded in half, folded in half again. <coughs> and excuse me. And, uh, just cut everything in basic five, five inch squares. So this is my leftover ones from this one. So it's cool. Now this, the next one I'm doing is in yellows. So it's going to look really cool. And the technique is pretty easy and kind of fun to do. So that's why I picked that size. Um, I think I'm going to do a couple of them, almost like a table runner. And I'm going to put the setting squares in between. And I'm probably going to use this top fabric because the uh, fabric, the, the colors are amazing. And it should contain every color that I'm using. I see the purple, pink, yellow, bright pink, the greens. I think it'll look amazing. The salmon color. So I think it'll pull it all together without being too much. So does not look fun. So this is uh, Anita Good Design from the May 2022 All Access. So, yeah, I couldn't decide what to do because remember we did some of these guys. Um, Tula Sullivan B took them took her so I still have the cow uh, I couldn't decide which ones I like best so I thought hey what the heck let's do both so I should have reviewed the instructions but I didn't so I'm gonna wing it it is a completely different process it's flip and fold that Anita Good Design does of course uh, but it's a little bit different so we're gonna play around with that so I have everything ready. I have my beautiful tulip fabric. Isn't this great fabric and how well it goes together? Uh, this is probably my favorite block ever with the purple. I, I just think they're really beautiful. And you know what? I think this is going to be stunning too. It makes the yellow stand out quite a bit. So I thought this was a clever way of doing it and bringing the whole thing together and uh, I think it'll work out. So now that I've explained all that, let's go to the machine and get started because yay. So are we on the machine? We are. So I am using the hoop. I didn't quite have the right size. So it's basically a 10 and a half by 10 and a half hoop. And, uh, it should be okay. I want to use the smallest hoop that I have um, available to me. Uh, this is the only one I have. Nine and a half by nine and a half would have worked perfectly. Again, because it's nine by eight, the size. Um, also, again, there's all different sizes. So you can pick which ones you want. You can make it into a coaster, a trivet. A uh, big, huge wall hanging. I guess I could have done the big, 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 big hoop. Um, that would have looked good. Now, Bob and Chuck, I think it's going to be a little more awkward with the big hoop. Being checking because they're screaming. Yeah, I know, I know. I appreciate the reminder. I should be pretty good on bobbin for this. It's more procedure than stitching, and I'm going to finish the stitching after. So I'm going to use black thread so you guys can see it really well. Uh, but normally I would use one of the colors so it doesn't stand out. Did you do nail check? Nail check. Ooh. My nails are really groovy today. They're kind of, uh, I think the other camera works better. Uh, it's black with silver stamping and then a metallic clear coat kind of on top and it's beautiful it's a shifting color so that's the size of it I mean the hoop fits perfectly hopefully you guys saw the googly eyes because this is the first time I've used this hoop believe it or not so 
I'm kind of, I don't know what happened there, but I'm not going to leave it. We got a little tangled. Did we get a little split? Why is there two threads coming out? Okay. I'm pretty sure we have a thread a pillar. Yeah, we have a thread a pillar, which is fine. So we're just going to pull it out a little bit and just redo it and get rid of it. No thread of pillars. No, not on my embroidery, they're not. And there we go on this. So the folded fabric is a really cool technique. It looks like I did this on, on my sewing machine, but it's all on the embroidery machine. And the crazy quilt part of it, their, their motifs, I guess is the word, are absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So I was kind of excited about that. Kind of fun. And of course, anything hexagon just works for me. And um, send it to Beatrice. <laughs> no, I'm not using Cutaway. I am using the No Show Mesh Stabilizer which is the it's cutaway and i use it for all of my quilt blocks it's strong and soft and doesn't make anything you know stiff all right we are going to go back to the desk and trim this out back to the desk don yeah, okay. yeah. All right, just making a little room because my hoop is a little big. Getting my scissors. That's the only problem, I think, uh, that using a bigger hoop is you got to have room to do the trimming. And it takes a little bit you to, you know, to get used to it. So, as always, I'm going backwards because I just do things like that. It's better to have the duck bill going the right way, but my brain doesn't work like that apparently, so I'm just going to do what I do and trim it out. One of the hardest parts about this technique is making sure you leave a good enough seam allowance because it's really tempting to cut off all the edges and make it neat and tidy. Just ordered some no-show mash, says Sally. Uh, yes, it's super handy. I usually buy a huge roll of it from Amazon. The brand I've been using, uh, because I ran out of dime everything, because I used that up first, is uh, Super Punch from Amazon. and uh, Or we order it directly from him. He's in Canada, so it's kind of handy. So nice trimming. Now you can see the eyes. He's got big googly eyes. Big googly eyes. Big googly eyes. Looks and like a smile. And also nails. Just so you can oh, see my nails. Let's get close up the nails. They're kind of glowy and Maybe. you could see the color shifting in them. And the design. See this is a different on my thumb is a different um color shifting, but you could see Ooh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. All right, let's go back to the machine and we're going to get this started. So another thing when you're using a bigger hoop than what you're used to is make sure on the back end you have more than enough room. You do not want this hitting anything ever, <laughs> ever. Okay, so I'm going to get my fabric ready. Now, for this one, starting off, normally we would do an applique. The first step is applique. For this one, it's different. So we're going to stitch the placement line so you can make sure you have enough fabric um, to cover everything. So, again, I'm using size A and I'm using 5x5 five five squares. So now we got the placement and the next step is the folded fabric line. So we aren't going to sew this, stitch this completely down. 
So if you get lost when you're doing the folded fabric, just kind of pretend to fold it over to make sure, and you gotta make sure, cause it's a, a different shape, that you have enough on this end for your seam allowance. So we wanna put it like this and at an angle. So they're not doing the placement just for the fold, they're doing the entire placement and then... Just, the, just to start off. Yeah, oh, okay, gotcha. Because if you don't have this placement, then you don't know how much fabric right. to need, yep. that you need. So now we're going to stitch the fold line and this is going to sit until the end. We may have to move it in or out of the way, but perfect. Isn't that perfect? It is. So we are going to fold it. Now I wanted the designs to be, um, like flowers and then the more solid colors. So that's what I'm doing. So make sure you keep everything in the right order. So next piece, we are going to do the placement line, just same as normal. Perfect. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to get my super bright yellow. Oh, I know. I was so happy when I picked this. I'm like, yeah, this will be perfect. So because the needle moved here and I need a good design, when we stitch folded fabric, it starts in the middle, goes one side and back. So it's handy. So then you know which way you want your fabric to go. So again, if you have a hard time, you can just do a, you know, pretend fold over. So this is the line that we want it to cover. And hopefully I want to get it. So seam allowance and top part. So, and if you make a mistake, just pick it out. I actually had to for a couple of them because we're used to squares and, you know, making it easy and triangles. And I miscalculated a couple times with this. Um, and so I had to do some picking out. It's like, darn it, for sure. So this looks like it's okay. So finger press, if you wanted to iron it, you could. Uh, I find that the batting kind of holds it down a little bit. Smooth it out, make sure. See, I'm really close <laughs> here. Whew, really little bit it's just a hard uh for me anyways to calculate like coverage sort of thing we do have to do a little bit of trimming i do need to angle it around a little bit more because any more than that and it would be a disaster so again i wouldn't normally use black but i want you guys to see exactly what i'm doing and I wanted to make sure everything would show up properly. So, awesome. So what I'm gonna do before we start on the next one is, now I normally, and I always tell you guys, I don't do any trimming at the machine, but this is gonna be covered up, so it's just a little bit easier to do it this way. And I will move it this way. You don't have to cut the middle part out yet, but I'll do it just because I don't want to mess it up. So, so far so good, other than the black thread. Uh, it's pretty easy. So the hardest part about this is the placement of the flip and fold fabric that you don't cut it too close like I did. So I have way too much here and not enough there. So we'll try to, we'll try to fix that this time. It seemed the more I did, the worse I got at it. So, ha, ah, that's our placement. And what I'm gonna do for this one, just to maybe make it a little bit easier. So the machine moved to here, so we know that's where we're gonna be folding from. So what would fit better? That and up a little bit. So see how you figure it out? And then we're just going to flip it. 
that is probably the easiest way of doing it. it yeah, yeah. With different shapes, it's kind of hard. Uh, it depends how your brain works, and mine just has a nap when it comes to this. See, already it looks better that it'll be folded properly. So remember too to always take your time if you get frustrated with the fabric folding. Just take a break. See, I got it right that time. So that's how I'm going to do the rest of them. So I'm just finger pressing. If you wanted to iron, you can take the hoop off and do that. It looks really good if it's nice and flat. So now we're going to stitch it down in the black, which is kind of terrible, but that's okay. That's okay. Perfect. Look at my nice seam right here. Much better than the first one. I actually did the first one on the 10 needle. And I much prefer to do work like this on my Luminaire. So it's awesome. But you can clearly see, isn't that a perfect seam there? I love it. So we're just going to keep going. Now I'm just going to pull this out. And again, because we're putting fabric over it, I'm not that worried about it. So I'm just going to get rid of the excess. And it's a good idea to get rid of the excess because you don't want your uh, foot getting caught in anything. Ask me how I know. Some, how you know? Sometimes when I get lazy on stuff, I learn the hard way. But you can see, too, none of the black shows through, which is kind of awesome. So there we go, our placement, and we're going to watch to where the needle, the foot goes. But you can guess where it goes. He just says, I got up early today, and Sue's voice is so soothing. It's like watching Bob Ross. Bob Ross! He was <laughs> awesome! He was I awesome. Oh yeah, for sure. So I'm going to do the same way that I did before because I seem to have trouble with the shape. And that looks like I have good coverage. So then we'll just flip it. Keep the same angle. Hopefully I did it. It's a lot of flippies. It's flip and fold, but the results, it's gorgeous. So I do find that's an easier way and then I can you know, relax a little bit more. And almost time for the flipping. I was thinking that at the end, if I was going to use all of my pieces that I cut up, at the end I'd have some extra blocks and I would just put them all together. Just kind of mix them up just to use all my squares. See, doesn't that look good? Just mm -hmm. a little bit of pressing and it's kind of static that will hold it. Beautiful. All right. So that's the technique for uh, flip and fold that I use when it's a weird shape. Oh, that one was pretty close too. Awesome. Mmm, do you like the yellow? And the tulips better or the purple and the turquoise? That is a tough call, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful. So just a quick trim. And just because it's convenient, I, I don't know if I'm on camera. That's okay. They know what I'm doing. I'm just cutting, hacking out the middle part because we're going to put an applique in there. So, yeah. Whoop, there we go. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to take, remember the first one that we did and we just have the, the fold part. I'm going to move it out of the way so I don't make any mistakes and stitch it. So we're still going along. Look at my nice seams. It's beautiful. I have more than enough seam allowance, so I'm happy with that. It's moving right along. I love it. So placement, so we need a tulip one. Flip and fold is actually really easy to do. I like it better than 
applique because because uh, there's a lot less trimming and you don't have to be precise. So again, I'm just laying it out and I have good coverage. I have enough seam allowance. So then I'm just going to keep the angle and uh, flip it. Just flip it. Perfect. Maybe. <laughs> possibly. It could possibly be perfect. So we're going to stitch it down. Anytime that when you're doing stuff and you see just a line, that means a flip and fold. You'll, you should know that before you start, but it's kind of weird when you see it. Flip and fold. Let's see how I did with this one. I almost did okay. I think I did okay. Yeah, I did. So finger crease it. I think I'm really close right here. But you can't really do anything about it. If you want to use tape, you can use tape. If you want to iron it, you can iron it. Perfect. I'm going to be really close here, but it's kind of that kind of day. So the only thing different about this flip and fold is how, whoo, how you start doing it. It does not get any closer than that. Two chickens today. I'm counting. Uh, possibly two chickens. That one's pretty close. I think it's a little bit off, but you can't really see it, so I'm going to leave it. Yeah, see, my brain just doesn't, it just doesn't compute for it's, it. It is hard with the angles and yep. the different shape. And yep. Take some thinking there. Yeah, my brain just doesn't see the shapes when you move them. I know that sounds weird, yeah, but... It's weird when you place it, I look at it. Uh, yeah. And it's a weird shape, so it's just a matter of getting used to it. It's very cool, though. It's a nice technique. Uh, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Crazy quilting is fun no matter what you do. This is also kind of upside down, too. It's weird. It's just weird shape. So I think aligned like that and we have it covered. So I'm going to flip it back and keep the same angle. And... I hope I'm right. I hope I'm right. So I also remember I have the number one piece folded back out of the way because you don't want to be stitching it yet. Because the finishing technique is pretty cool on this one. Let's see how I did. It's a gamble. Did I do okay? Oh, I did. There we go. No chicken on this one, I don't think. Nope. Perfect. I did perfect on that one. Look. So I'm taking a minute just to press everything down. Make it as flat as you can. This is when a <coughs> single needle machine is perfectly delightful as opposed to the multi-needle machine because you have the bed to press everything better. Yeah, yeah it makes it... To me, it makes it better. Yee, we're on our last one. I'm so excited. So does anyone have any questions about doing this? Now, this part, after I trim this, sorry. Now, this part I did find a little tricky. Why don't we go back to the desk so I can, sh you know, breathe a little bit. So I have my one piece left over that I'm going to put aside and I'm going to finish trimming this. So we want a folded edge on the end. So what we're going to do 
is this is the line that we're working on and I did have a bit of a hard time uh, getting this perfect on the last one. So the last stitch that we're doing, I got this though, the last stitch that we're doing is just a straight stitch. Um, so we end up with a fold. It's almost perfect. Uh, I guess because I was on the big machine that, see, these aren't as tight as I'd like, but I, I kind of didn't get the right angle. So for this part, you know, I think it's a lot better to put it down on your desk and make sure. So I've just folded it under. I'm not going to worry about trimming it just in case I'm wrong. So, uh, you know, I, I have an older baby lock. Do you think I could do this design? You can do this design on any machine as long as your hoop size uh, is big enough for what you're doing. But because I need a good design offer so many different sizes, you can do it on any machine as long as it's an embroidery machine. You got this. Pretty much. Yeah, which is nice which is nice. They do tell you the sizes so you can double check before you make a purchase. Yep. Yep. They tell you the sizes for everything. So that's going to look good. Now this one is on top. So I'm going to not use my black because I really don't want it to show. So I'm going to take my black away and, and I'm going to grab my white. So let's go back to the machine and see how close I got on that. It's awesome. Back to the machine. And you won't be able to see this stitch because I am using white, but that's okay. Now we have some crazy quilt stitches to do. Uh, and we have the applique to do where I'm going to pull the purple from the last block so it'll tie it all together I just I just thought it was a great way of doing it so white thread in now this is just painters tape and I know I'm gonna stitch through it but it's not an issue so let's see how I did I hope I got the placement right on it oh, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? Uh, okay, so I kind of missed that one. Can you can you refold the top part that didn't catch and then yeah, do it again? Make I'm, it catch. I'm just never mind. I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> I am gonna go back one color, and we're gonna go back to the desk. It's um, I almost had it off a little bit on the end so you can see or maybe you can't see very well this part the top part is perfect but I didn't quite get the right angle on this so I'm not gonna pick this out because I think it's fine what I'm gonna do is extend my fold and this is why I said don't cut your fabric don't cut your fabric. It's another good tip and making it easy to fix. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Uh, if I was like completely off and out in the wind there, I would just simply pick out these stitches and start again. But I don't think I'm that far off. See, I had this brain problem at the end of the other one too. So hopefully... Let's see. We're going to try it again. Hopefully. I don't know why I can't calculate it, but it's not that hard. Let's go back to the machine. Carrying in a piece of tape. I hope I got this. All right. Let's see. Fingers crossed, people. We're, we're rooting for you. Yep. Yay. Perfectly perfect. Oh, I'm so happy I did that. Just a little bit of patience, you know, guys. Little bit of patience. And uh, now we're going to stitch it down. 
So I'm still a tiny bit off, but you won't be able to see it at all. Isn't that awesome? It's a perfect way of finishing it off. Yeah, easy, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So that's the hardest part of the design. And you can see how quickly it goes. You can also see how uh, easy it is to do. So let's go back to the desk for a minute. And I'm going to show you guys with the tape. So it is uh, just painter's tape, masking tape. And I did sew through it. But look how easy it comes off. I have a little piece left in there, so I'll get my stitch picker, like a nose picker, but for stitches, I guess. And it just totally comes out. You don't even have to worry about it. That I keep thinking that's it, but it's the the stuff matches exactly oh, that flower. flower. Yes. So yeah, don't don't overpick it. Don't. I'm gonna put it back, and I'm gonna trim here. So my circle looks good. Now, tank, stop. Now you can see, this side is probably better. You can see how beautiful it's going to be with the centers. Gia's asking if you could have sewn the stitch line so that it shows where you need to make your fold in the first place. Yep, you could have. You could have. I still wouldn't have got it. That's just me. By the way, that's just me. Oh, I wanted to point out, look at my cauldron. Ha! Huh? My candy dish. Cauldron full of my favorites, peppermints. So there we go. We'll get better candy, but it's my absolute favorite. So you can see how groovy this is going to look. And let's see. I'm going to use the leftover piece on this one so oh, they it ties it in. yeah nice. it completely matches so that's why i was thinking that it's a great idea to do it with a layer cake because there's one left over all the pieces are easy to cut out and you have one left over now charm square packs only have one or two of each one so layer if you have your favorite layer cake uh i think it would go a long way your whole layer cake but everything matches everything looks so beautiful there's butterflies for the middle part um but you don't have to do these designs they're awful cute though uh butterflies uh i think there's flowers there's really cute mushrooms but you can put any design in the middle just skip it's at the end just skip it and just put something else in so let me ask uh you guys if you have any questions and tell me which block you like better because it's a tough call i did this one better because i was uh able to get everything down flat so it looks nicer uh, compared to this one, I mean, it doesn't look bad when I iron it. It's going to look fine. I just didn't do that. Um, and don't worry about these extra pieces yet. When it's done and you take it off the hoop, then you can trim it, leaving a seam allowance. See how I left a seam allowance here? Um, but for now, don't worry about it. So do you like the purple or the yellow better? tough call I think I was only gonna do two of these but you know what I might do more <laughs> I might do more now if you're gonna set them up like this when you're done everything's done and you're sewing it together there are setting triangles that will fit in between so then you have straight lines both and Dilbeck says both Purple is my favorite color. It's a lilac color. That's why I started off with it. Leah says when you sew them together, are you going to put all the flower sides together or alternate them? Uh, however it works. <laughs> however it works out, I'm going to be 
uh, kind of random about that because I didn't pay attention. Like the first one, you know, that's a good point actually for planning out the first square that we do, which is here, uh, is flowers and then solid flowers, solid. I think I actually did them the right way, but look, if you put it like this, it would be the flowers, the little flowers and the flowers, but you got to make sure you see that your butterfly is in the correct orientation. You don't want to sew it together and have it you know, like this, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Looks like a happy mix. Uh, yeah. Everyone. I think ideally this opposite would just carry on the design. Jackie Cheek. Do you see pink? I haven't done pink yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I am actually going to keep going on this because it's gorgeous. And the fabric is gorgeous. So this is, now you guys can see a little bit better when I'm sewing it together. I'm going to use this bold for the setting triangles around the edge. I wish I had some yardage of this. This is not a fabric I would generally choose for myself, but uh, I think it's going to work. Look, I have four, four pieces of it. One, two, three, four. So that'll be perfect for the setting triangles. It's nice and bright and it has all of the colors in it. And I think it is the best one. There's purple. I could do purple and turquoise. Oh, there's so many orange. Look at the green is going to look super fantastic on it. Where do you find the layer cake fabric? Missouri star is where I got this one and it's called full bloom favorites. And it's from Benartex. Remember I said I was going to write it on the back when I took the label off? Well, I finally did that. So, because I don't always remember what they are. But I, I think this is um, probably my favorite fabric for this design. I think it's exactly precisely what I wanted. And it's beautiful. Oh, look, I didn't see this one. Oh, that's so pretty too. That with the, it's maybe the purple. Oh, I just, this is why I love layer cakes. And you that's. You have to flip through it carefully or you miss some. I missed that one because that one will be cute too. Um, That's pretty too. So that's the salmon color that we have here and we have in uh, some of the flowers. So that's the technique. It's a little bit updated folded fabric and I think my plan with the layer cake and having you know one or two extra at the end and carrying it over I think it's gonna look spectacular isn't that pretty these are my extra ones so I I'm just gonna keep them in a pile and maybe I'll do one hexagon with all the flowers that I have left over or uh all the solids and i think it's gonna be fun so guys make sure you comment after the video ends and uh, let me know how badly you want this embroiderer's compass you can fight don for it because he really wants it too and uh the winner will announce in the next video is awesome Sharon says, do you finish your products and post online? I absolutely do. Um, I try to remember Instagram, but Instagram is not my friend right now. They kind of are giving me a hard time and I don't understand why, um, but definitely in the group. So I'm going to be doing a little more stitching and uh, bring all my colors in for this. Uh, try folded fabric tri-folded fabric um, hexagons. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun. We're going to do some, I'm, I'm going to do some crazy quilting just to get all these designs. Oh, they're so cute, the crazy quilting. Uh, it's harder to see on this one because of the colors, but you know, there's apples and pretty things. Anyways, it's a whole lot of fun. So thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for learning this new technique with me. I only 
made one error that was super easy to fix. So, uh, yeah, awesome. Thanks everyone for, oh, wait, before I forget, no video on Monday because it's a holiday. It's a holiday, but I'll oh, still yeah. have my freebie going on. So the next time I'll see you is Saturday. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye everyone. Pick some beautiful fabric. Oh, I just love it.